everybody. So I am very thrilled and delighted to be with my dear sister, age mate, long time friend, local neighbour, Satara Gale, aka Lorna G. You may know her by a variety of names because she has had a variety of incarnations as an artist of great standing in our community and in the world beyond. So, hello. Greetings. Very excited to be here. Greetings. Okay, so let's just get go right from the top. So we're at Brixton House, uh, which is finally this fabulous theatre in Brixton Town, South London, mm. um, opposite the Dole Office, where we spent many a queue. Where back. three week Ghana Mijaira never come. Yeah. You see, mm -hmm. more of that later coming back. <laughs> um, and um, I, I suppose I wanted to f to start off with why are we having this interview? Why are we doing this? What are we going to be? What are we leading to creatively? That's happening for you in this building shortly. Well, we're having this interview because we're going to be talking about my play uh, called The Legends of Them. Excuse me again. Your what? Your my play. <laughs> your play. What you created? Yeah, 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 yeah. Which I wrote, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be performing in as a kind of a one woman. Play. We say it's one woman, but it's got so many different characters. So okay, but we'll get into that. It's interesting to me that now is the moment in your life mm. as an artist, as a woman, um, all the many aspects of who you are and what has made you and shaped you creatively. Now is the moment that you've said, hmm, I'm going to do a one woman show. Mm. What? Tell me about the thought process that got you to think it's now. You know what? It's been it's been a long time coming. The mm. process has started. Th this process actually started probably around nine or ten years ago mm -hmm. um, when I came back from India. But in the last probably five six years, we've really 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 been focusing on it. Um, we've we've had the shows and mm -hmm. and Joe. We've just been really honing in on, on it. And actually, you know, it, it as I said, it went through such a process because it, it, it had. The different writers at the beginning. Yeah, I wasn't going to be writing. I was going to writers and telling my story, and 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 for whatever reason, it just didn't work out. And it was, uh, you know, what I mean, this Janina saying, "You should write this. You write this." And I was like, "Really?" You know. And, and okay, so and how is that? How has that been for you? Because um, we'll get into it. But you know, you are you are a queen of Lovers Rock. You are. Uh, renowned as a reggae artist, mm. um, you've been a, a regular actor, um, you've done um, um, musicals, um, you know, the, the big shiny latest one was the Tina Turner musical in the West End, you met, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. blessings on her, you, you must, and you've written, obviously, you've written your own songs, yes, but uh, this is writing in a different styly yeah. and also it's 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 incredibly personal to you because yes. the, this show is full of different elements isn't yes. it can you sort of describe without any spoilers mm. uh what we will see uh yeah. press night is the 19th of september at brixton house i will be seeing it then and mm. um, what will we see what well, you'll see you're going to see as we just talked about my musical career you know music you know, I, I started, my, my first song was in 1983, so I've been in the reggae industry in, in, in London, in Jamaica, in America, you know, so we're going to be seeing a bit of that, we're going to see, we're going to see the, the spiritual journey mm -hmm. from, from starting in India, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to see the, my ancestors and my mother and my sister Cherry and my brother Muji and mm -hmm. all the guidance that I, I've had through, throughout my life. Um, and it's and you're going to see so many different characters, so many colourful characters from right here in Brixton to Brooklyn to Chiruvannamalai okay. to you know to Kingston. So when you were little, did you were you a storyteller? Were you a were you you know some kids? My grandson is you know vehicles. If he's not an engineer, I'll be mm. astonished. Mm -hmm. But what what was uh, who was yeah. who was little you? Little you, little me was um, I was I was a comedian. 
Mm. I was a, I was a, a clown. I was a clown. And actually, you know, from very, very young, I knew that I wanted to, uh, we used to pass, to, to go to church, we used to pass um, Italia Conte. And I used to see Lena Zavaroni and Bonnie Langford because mm. I used to watch them on TV and mm. I used to see them coming out. And I was like, oh my God, I want to go there, I want to go there. There's something in me from when I was nine and ten that knew that I wanted to, to do this. And, you know. And where were you living then? At the time, I was living in Brixton. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Are you Brixton born and bred? Brixton born and bred. Brixton born and bred. Right up there, up the road, um, I was born. And, um, uh, you know, my, my, my parent, my mother used to um, tell me to, she used to, she, I used to mimic people from church. Mm -hmm. And it was one of my mum's favourite party pieces. Yeah. So why the hell she didn't send me to job school, I don't know. Because she's the one that encouraged me anyway. Because she'd say, do um do do sister sister Smith do sister Smith watch her watch her watch her and I do sister Smith I'm like oh well Father God come down and then my mum would be like ah and she'd be laughing she'd be on the floor laughing at my, <laughs> do you know what I mean and that's how it all started for me really mm. do you know what I mean mimicking people yeah you know and when did the music kick in the music kicked in because you said that was eighty eighty three you would my first working like as a my first record came out in 1983 but way before that i was on i was going to the sound systems when i was very young mm -hmm. and going out and, and and going to shubins and blues dance and stuff like that and so i was on a mic uh, from then but the, the 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 music started because i did i wanted to act acting was my first passion and i wasn't allowed to do it were you not allowed to do it or yeah. was it okay it wasn't, oh, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't you weren't aware of what the paths could be it wasn't to that do it, it wasn't it was i wasn't it was i wasn't encouraged to do it you know we were seventh day adventists my mom we would go to church and mm -hmm. stuff i said mom i want to sit i want to act if you want to act come up for the lord which i did i did a lot of plays in in church and stuff like that but um, it wasn't, you know, obviously my mum had eight of us too, so she couldn't afford to send us to yeah. any other different um, yeah. um, um, activities. Like that. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, it was, it was kind of stifled a little bit, but I found another way to express myself, which was through the music. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, to me, in my head, it was like I, the quickest way What's the quickest way for me to get on stage? Yeah, yeah. I just knew that I, I was born to just be on be stage. On stage. Like, I don't know anything else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's your gift. Yeah, I just wanted to be on stage. I wanted to entertain. I wanted to storytell. Because even when I was writing my lyrics, um, it, I would write them in form of a story. And, and I would try to express it to the people, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, rather than just standing up and singing a song. Really? So we've gone from 1980. Yeah, <laughs> I can't do the maths. This is what. This is why. This is why. There's a lot of stories. 90, 2000, 2000. No, 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 no. When did so? When did you go to drama school? 2000. And I graduated in 2003. As you hit 40. As I hit 40, baby. So you were so you were a pretty new bug when we worked together. Yeah. You'd have never known. I literally just got consummate out. professional, <laughs> beautiful actor, beautiful actor. Thank you. you. Are. Yeah. Well, so are you, my darling. And we're going to get to a love fest now. We are. No. But no, but so come tell me. So so. And how much did I learn on that? Did you see, this is the thing I learn on different plays. You me learn too. As you yeah. you know, as you as you're going along. So yeah. for me to get such a beautiful job so early on in my career and work with you know professionals like yourself my god it was it was a true true blessing uh, sorry can you just explain what happened just briefly mm. for, for people who aren't in the well my sister was um shot and they said it was a mistaken identity there was a the, the police came the police to your house to my sister's, your sister's house, house on 22 normandy road while she was sleeping five of them bust open the door uh, she came out to see what was going on and as she saw these police and everything she turned around and they shot her mm. um, the, 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 the bullet lodged in her spine she fell couldn't get up and um, so it kind of uh, all went from that um, and then you know and then obviously the family hears about it we, we'll, we, I don't even know, it wasn't even, it wasn't even, there wasn't phone calls those days, it was no, like coming to your house and saying, listen, um, Jerry's been shot, we've all gone to the house, I and mean, we've gone to the house and massive big crowd is 
he's gathered outside mm. and it all kind of kicked off from there. I mean, when my mum was going to the hospital, they'd already taken her to the hospital by the time we got to the, to the, to the house and my mum was, you know, telling me to come and I was like, no, 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 I'm going to the police station. So I, I more or less led the march mm -hmm. to, the, to the police station, angry, ready. Because um, Cherry's never committed a crime in her life. And, you know, she she uh, was just there minding her own business, but yeah, it was it was a it was a really it was a weird weird time. And seeing my mother also um, torn with grief, although she wasn't dead, but just just her life was utterly utterly changed. And all of your lives are utterly completely, changed. Completely, yeah. completely changed. And then after that, my my sister spent two years in 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 hospital. You know where they took they 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 was going to take her legs and then the doctor said they can save her legs in Stoke Mandeville and then they took out every bone out of her body so she lived the rest of her life with no bones from the from the waist down you know mm -hmm. so yeah it was hard seeing her um, I don't right. know that, find a way got to find a that. way that was <laughs> 1985 I wrote that song I wrote that song when my sister Cherry Gross was shot. And then the Brixton uprising took place, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of um, you know uh, unease. Um, and that that song was born out of that period, mm -hmm. um, and things really started to take off. And then you know there was something that uh, after a couple of years just uh, just felt like there was nothing here that couldn't move any further. There was nothing here for me. Um, I was feeling so discouraged and disgruntled and with everything, with the system, with, you know, having to see my sister in this position that she was in. So that would be part of the push that took you stateside to try and reframe? Yeah, I mean, you know, I guess with me at that time, man, I, I, I was running. Mm -hmm. I was running. I, I used to run a lot. Uh, that's all I needed to do, to do, just get away. Mm -hmm. um, and restart, get away, restart, get away. Um, it's something that we've done as a family for, uh, for from childhood. We were kind of running from different places because mm. of situations mm. there. Um, so yeah, this feels like oh, I just needed to get out. Yeah, and and that I did. And um, and so how was America? It was amazing. When I first got there, man, I was on top of the world. Where, where did you go, Brooklyn? No, first I went to Bridgeport. Because, okay. yeah, I had people that lived in Bridge okay. Bridgeport. Um, I went there, I spent a year there, and I eased my way into Brooklyn. I found family in Brooklyn, and I stayed in Brooklyn for another year. Um, meantime, I found some producers, I started hanging out with all of the, I found all the biggest entertainers from Jamaica at the time, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So I was hanging out with Barrington Neva and Buja Banton and Ninja Man and wow, Shabba wow, and wow, Super wow, Kiat and all of them. I was hanging out with all of them met this promoter, he put me on shows with them and then that, so I, that's how I started running a circuit um, with, with those ent entertainers and it was it was great for, you know, I ended up winning an award 1992, I got best female DJ, Shabba Ranks got best male and it, it was like, you know, it was, it was, it was on top of the world um, and then things took a turn and you have to watch the play to find out Oh, nice Nice. Yeah. And I hear we got um, Mr. Gino on the uh, visual. Yes. Control. Yes. So tell us a little bit about what that is. Extraordinary. Extraordinary. I mean, we're going to be using a lot of uh, visuals. We've got a lot of videos, a lot of um, um, snippets from different different eras. You know, um, we we have a um, not only Gino. We have a, uh, Joshi, who's uh, the lighting. He, he's that, he's, he's... Give them their full names, let's give them proper. Joshy Harriet, isn't it? And he's... Um, and what's Gino's full name? Larry's yeah, full name. Gino Ricardo Green, mm -hmm. man. He is a bad boy when it comes to a video because also his ideas, mm -hmm. it, it excites us. So you've been working in a, although you've written it yeah. and it's your life yeah. and it's your journey yeah. and it's the elements of your family history and your cultural history. Yes. Um, you've worked in a sort of collaborative way with other it artists. Has to be, it has to be collaborative because um, it, it, it can't be done. It, it, it can't be done alone. And, and these, all of these elements with Joshi Harrier and Gino um, and we have, um, uh, we have uh, Christella Latchers. 
she's a, an amazing musician so she's mm -hmm. on board as, as, as the MD and and we've got Tony Gale on, on, on sound uh, not a gear, what do you mean? Um, and, and you know, and, yeah, yeah. And, and I'll tell you something, it, 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 it's a whole collaboration, it is, it's bringing the story together. Joe, the director, is a theatre maker. Yes, yeah, she is. She is a theatre maker. And she's maker. an actor as well. Of course she yeah. is. So she knows about theatre, but I'm Joe McInnes. Joe McInnes. And she's on another level when it comes to theatre making. Mm -hmm. so like her ideas, are the, you know, she <laughs> she gets excited and she's like, Ooh! and yeah, we know something's about to happen. Yeah, yeah. We know something is about to happen. This explosion. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's exciting. So, um, so I guess, because I mean, when you've been working musically, if you're in the studio, obviously there's a, there's a level of collaboration mm. involved in that. Mm. What, What's been different in this process for you? Or has it been What's been same? different? You know what it is, yeah? It's, um, it's the time it takes. Mm -hmm. it, it's the time it takes to really... Because when I first started writing the play, I, I just wanted to get this story out. There was, a, you know, there was something in me that was burning. I just needed to get it out. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what the story was. I just knew that there was a lot of different stories that were coming to the forefront that, that I needed to get out. Or I was in a process of healing, I was in a process of shedding. So a lot of these things were coming up, things that I hadn't thought about for many, many years were just suddenly coming up and it, it started when I was on this spiritual journey with my brother Muji. So these stories, you know, they've, they've been coming and coming and coming and it's just lately, within the last uh, few couple of years, that the story has informed us mm -hmm. what it is. If when you say informed us, who's the us? Me, Nina, and Joe. Okay. Because it's us three that's okay, been really, really been working that. tight together. Good. And and after we after we chose the creative team, we were able to share it with them, and we wanted to bring them in from early so that they could, uh, you know, know and be a part of the whole, the play, whole yeah. the whole thing, rather than, you know, saying, oh, well, this is what we want them. They're, they're a part of it, so their ideas are just as important too. So yeah, but it's just been like us, the three musketeers. Fantastic. I mean, all through flipping lockdown, you know, we were... It's quite, a f uh, you know, I know lockdown was terrible. Yeah. And a lot of people suffered yeah. hardships and yeah. not everybody's over it yet. Mm -hmm. um, but creatively, mm. it was quite a fertile mm. time. It was, because we all had, we all had to stand down from the hustle yeah, for a minute, exactly. which gives the brain and the spirit time to, time to breathe out. Ah, yeah. I tell you, mm. and you have to find other ways, and you, find, you know what you find, you find muscles that you never know that you had, mm -hmm. that you find determination, you know what I mean, you've got man over there telling you, oh no, well, you know, you better go find another job, you better go, you know, study a new trade, and all that. you know, yeah. will there ever be theatre again? Will yeah. we ever act? I mean, mm -hmm. is, what, what is going to happen with creativity? Mm -hmm. We had all these questions that we had to ask, you know what I mean? And what would we do without, or what would, you know, and all the, so, I mean, I think it forced us to really cement ourselves yeah. in this and say, this is what we're going to just buckle up and hear what happened, I'm going to do it with now. every single thing I've got. Talking about your every single things you've got, um, Talk about your spiritual journey with Muji. What was all of this? Because if this feels like a like it's been a profound shift for you. Yeah, it's been an amazing, profound shift. I, I went to India. He took me to India with him in twenty in ten. And what's Muji's connection with India? Does he have a particular? Yeah, connection? because he used to go out there and do satsangs over there. He mm -hmm. was very so. Just tell us a little bit about for satsang. people that don't know satsang uh, who Muji is or yeah. what what his. So his 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 gift is right. So Muji is a spiritual teacher, um, and he he. <laughs> how, how can I explain Muji? Um, yeah, he's a he's a spiritual teacher. He's somebody that he was um, a, a, a student of Papaji, who is is from Lucknow in India and mm -hmm. that's who he used to go to satsangs with him mm -hmm. and I think he... And what, what faith tradition is this? It's not really... It's not, people were trying to understand kind yeah. of... It's not really a faith. What he does is he just points you to your true self. Okay. He points you to your true self and um, in a form of, of, of satsang, of guided meditation. Okay. You know, of this yeah. kind of thing. So, yeah, he just points you to, to, to your true self and it just encourages you to be the observer, uh, 
rather than being this personal, the personal self and believing in your personal stories, it's about being that observer, which is really ironic because the play that I'm doing is a lot of personal stories. But, come, but born out of all your observations. Exactly. Legends of them. The legends of them. The legends of them. And who's them for you? Them is my mother, Euphemia, my sister Cherry, Nanny of the Maroons, because mm -hmm. she runs Ghanaian heritage. heritage. Just saying. That's right. Yes, that's what we, we say. Okay. Yeah. She came straight from the Gold Coast that's it, and to Jamaica, mm -hmm. and um, and my brother Muji. They, they, those one, those legends have passed, but Muji's a living legend, mm -hmm. and uh, still following his pointings and his guidances. Jackie Kay has this thing, you, don't, you know Jackie, so Jackie Kay, um, mm. uh, uh, Scottish, she was, she was the Scottish Mecca, um, uh, mixed um, heritage, uh, Nigerian mm. Scottish, and uh, she wrote a thing when her dear friend um, Julia Darling died, um, and I'm going to misquote it now, but essentially uh, it's, she's, she's a poet, and she said, you know, um, it's something like, um, the dead don't go till we do. They stay with us holding our hands. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. That's beautiful. It is, isn't it? That's Woo! What was that? That was the dead saying hi. Oh. After you just said what you just said, mm -hmm. and you know this, you know this whole play started from grief. It's grief made me start writing this play, you know, because everybody around me was just dropping, 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 mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? That's what that's is what this whole thing it started. This whole thing, and then it turned into a different thing. But it was grief that kind of <laughs> you know. So there we are. We just got the blessing. We just got confirmation, bro. Confirmation. Yeah, you know man. The right? train of souls. Like it was a proper like choo choo train. Ooh, ooh. Thomas, <laughs> tank engine. <laughs> that sounds like a good place to end. Mm. For now, the story continues. Mm. September, Brixton House. Sitara, can't wait.